Welcome back, and we're in part two of our program with our next guest, Jonathan Seabon. Jonathan, you work with the Austin Hospital. If you could tell us a couple of um, titles, I guess, that you wear. Yeah, so I'm the uh, Director of Medical Oncology at the Austin, and I also work for the Ludwig Institute for Cancer Research, where I head a program that looks at uh, cancer vaccines. Mm -hmm. So that work is uh, based around a, a recognition that the immune system is a potential way to, to fight cancer. I think we all recognise that existing treatments, chemotherapy, radiotherapy, surgery, have all got their limitations and there are probably other ways of treating cancer and our major focus over recent years has been finding ways of getting the immune system to, to do that job. Okay, and where are you kind of at with that research? Well, it's a, it's, it's a long journey. It, yeah. You know, the, the analogy that we've, I guess, come to use it relates a bit to the, the walk and the Great Wall of China. You know, it's one brick at a time, one step at a time, but we're getting there. Um, the, uh, the immune system has been recognised as having potent effects on cancer uh, for many years, but it's been a long time coming in trying to find ways of really using that to advantage in the clinic. And um, I guess the big breakthrough took place about 15 years ago when some colleagues of ours at the Ludwig Institute in Belgium, and more recently other Ludwig Institute branches around the world have contributed to this research, um, came up with some really key discoveries and those discoveries relate to targets which are present on the cancer cell which the immune system can, can see and can recognise and can attack mm -hmm. uh, and those are targets which are not present on normal cells of the body so you've got a way that the immune system can be selective at attacking the cancer and those targets are, are molecules which can be produced uh, in the laboratory and turned into vaccines. So by taking these molecules and making vaccines out of them, we're trying to stimulate the immune system against targets on the cancer, uh, much as you would stimulate uh, the immune system against diphtheria or whooping cough uh, for the treatment of infectious diseases. Okay. So what's happening as far as um, the patients that are, I guess, part of the study for yeah, this vaccine? Yeah. What's the results happening there? Okay. So, we, so we, Again, a longish story. We started a clinical trial in conjunction with the biotechnology company uh, CSL mm -hmm. and um, started working with them about seven or eight years ago, uh, developed a vaccine based on Ludwig Institute discoveries mm -hmm. and took that into a clinical trial uh, which has uh, now completed some years ago. How many people were part of that? So there were about 50 patients who took part in that trial mm -hmm. and it was what we call a phase one study. So yep. the study was basically aimed at trying to figure out how the immune system responded to the vaccine and to determine whether or not it was safe to give to people. Uh, we did that, found that it was safe, found that they got good immune responses against the target molecule. And then um, someone unexpectedly, because it was never really part of our game plan early on, uh, we noticed that there seemed to be some impact on the disease. The, the patients who took part in the trial had uh, malignant melanoma, which is a form of skin cancer, and they had a relatively advanced stage disease, um, but disease which could be removed by the surgeons. So if you like, they were patients who had the disease removed surgically, but were at very high risk of it coming back again. So if, well, just on that, why, given that it was removed surgically, yeah. why are they then at high risk? Yeah, they're, okay. they're at high risk because the cancer gets away. So cells from the cancer get out into the bloodstream or into the lymph nodes mm -hmm. and spread into other parts of the body. And once they spread to other parts of the body, they start to grow and form secondary tumours. And they can form in the brain or the liver or the bones or the lungs, anywhere virtually. And um, we recognise that there are some patients who have these high-risk melanomas and even despite surgery have a, a, a really serious risk of the disease coming back, you know, within the next three to five years. Okay. So we vaccinated this sort of patient and then found uh, three to five years later that in fact many of them had relapsed. But when we looked at those patients who developed the tumours and compared them to those who didn't, we found that there were some important differences. And the important difference was that some of them had received the proper vaccine and others hadn't received the proper vaccine. And what I mean by that is that while we were developing this vaccine, one of the things you do as part of the testing is you start with small doses and you build up. And we, the vaccine was a combination of the target molecule together with something called the adjuvant, which is what boosts the immunity more strongly. Mm -hmm. So some patients got what you'd call full-blooded doses of the vaccine and other patients didn't. And nearly all of the survivors were patients who had this full-blooded dose of the vaccine, and the patients who unfortunately relapsed were patients who tended not to get the proper, you know, full-strength vaccine. 
So that really led us to think that this was doing more um, than just boosting immunity, that boosting immunity was really having some impact. And we therefore did a what's called a, a randomised controlled trial. So that's a proper study where this was the question that was being addressed. Um, and uh, patients in Australia and in the United Kingdom uh, received this vaccine um, or placebo mm -hmm. and uh, are now in the follow-up stage and uh, towards the end of this year we'll have results from that trial and that will determine whether or not what we saw was real or just some sort of a statistical fluke because okay. with clinical research um, flukes can happen and you have to determine sort of with a robust clinical trial whether or not it's true and repeating uh, these experiments with enough patient numbers uh, is the way that that's done. Okay, so the research that you're getting back and the results, now can this be then taken to, into other form of cancers? Yeah, so the target molecule is a thing called NYESO1, which yep. is a bit of a mouthful. Yep. Um, it was first actually discovered in cancer of the esophagus, not in cancer of the, of, of the skin, of melanoma. So in fact it uh, potentially can be used in that disease and if you look in lung cancer and breast cancer and bladder cancer and uh, various other cancers as well, you can find it there too. So if the target is there on the cancer, you can potentially use the vaccine to treat it. Your, um, your experience of the walk, because it's interesting, you know, talking about the work that you do back at um, Austin Health or with the Ludwig Institute, moving though forward to the reason that you're here, and we've obviously now completed the walk, what's been your personal experience? Well, the first thing about it is it was just an amazing group of people to, mm -hmm. to walk with. I mean, it was pretty tough, you know, people were well and truly out of their comfort zone, but mm -hmm. the camaraderie and the spirit of enthusiasm and the sort of the, the bonding that took place between people from, you know, from all walks of life was just fantastic. Mm -hmm. And it was really held together, I think, by a common sense of purpose. You know, we were there doing this to, to make a difference, and uh, I think everyone really wanted to do that and was happy to be there. Okay, what stages were you on? I started in stage four, so I was there for the second half. Mm -hmm. And were there differences in, you know, um, weather conditions or geography? What were your experience across that? So we started somewhat west, uh, where it was a pretty bleak landscape to begin with. It was sort of sandy and there wasn't much green, and the wall was mostly mud or, you know, packed, rammed earth. And we ended up in springtime outside on the outskirts of Beijing with the blossom trees and the forest in bud and uh, with the mountains with those very classical rocky views that you see when you look at postcards or picture books of the Great Wall. <laughs> so there was that lovely transition as the landscape unfolded. And I think, you know, there wasn't a day that went past when we weren't just overwhelmed by the, by the sort of majesty of the, of the wall, of the landscape, of, of what we were seeing. So it was, uh, you know, as a sort of a geography lesson and as a, as a visual treat, it was, it was wonderful. Pretty special. What's the metaphor, given what you've just been sharing about the research, what's the metaphor that you can use from your experience of the wall to the work that you do? Yeah, so cancer research, I mean, everyone knows that we haven't got the cure for cancer and everyone knows that people have been beavering away, you know, in four corners of the globe for years trying to find a cure for cancer. And you might throw up your hands and say, well, look, you know, this isn't too good. What are these pe people doing with their time? But the reality is we've been learning as we go along. Um, knowledge builds on the knowledge that went before. Insights are gained, and as insights are gained, people understand more. And each one of those is like a brick, you know, and the wall was built with hundreds of millions of bricks, and I think cancer research is a bit like that. You know, each brick is, is, is one step towards the completion of the, the, the task and, um, and we're getting there, you know, it's taking time. People are sort of hoping that there'll be a, a breakthrough, some sort of a flash of lightning and suddenly cancer will be cured. I think the reality is that it's going to be an incremental process. It's going to take uh, a lot of researchers a lot of time, but we're getting there. And uh, I think when it happens, we'll all be pretty proud that it was an achievement that we've all been able to contribute towards. Absolutely. We'll take another break and come back with the last part of our program. Stay with us.